Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio It's not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, and medical well-being. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Evening, and what a fabulous evening this show is going to be. We have a return guest here on Journeys with Rebecca. It is with Dr. Edward Dowdy, Jr., Now, he is the author of The Extinction Shift Principle, for those of you who have been following the show. He is going to be here talking to us about some of the latest discoveries as to what's going on in the heavens. Again, the guest tonight is Dr. Edward Dowdy, Jr., and we're going to be talking an awful lot with him in regards to some of these newest discoveries, what he thinks is going on in the heavens, and we are just going to have a really great show. I'm just so excited to have him here. Um, you know, speaking of the heavens, uh, we are going to be having uh, Miss Nancy Elgren back on uh, throughout the rest of this year, giving updates, uh, talking of the heavens. As you all know, she is an astrologer. Uh, she's going to be talking to us more and more about the movement of the planets as they are in our solar system and what they have, the effect that they have on us as individuals. You know, what is your sun sign? What is your moon sign? That kind of thing. It's going to be really fascinating. And as I do each and every week, I'd like to in, invite you to the website, journeyswithrebecca.com. If you have not been there in the recent few weeks, we have done a complete overhaul, an update, a facelift if you have, if you will have that as a term. Um, lots and lots of changes coming forth. We have kept some of the most important things, which is Journeys News and Our World News. There we update that uh, usually minimum of once a week can be up to two or three times a week. As new information comes available to us, we try to post that. So you want to definitely check back on journeyswithrebecca.com on the website there, see what's new and happening. You know, I am now working uh, very closely with the guests, not only that I've had on in the past, but the ones that will be coming forward uh, on Journeys with Rebecca. We are developing some new pages uh, to make it easier access for people trying to access maybe some specific information. We're going to be having articles that's going to be changing frequently that will deal with spirituality, that will deal with alternative health, we'll deal with the terrestrials and extraterrestrials, we'll deal with political and environmental information information that's going to be also posted. You're going to see those links on the left-hand side of the page change in the next few weeks as we continue to bring forth this new information and build these pages. So I invite you, the public, those of you who are out there listening, if you have anything that you think that would be uh, contributory for um, spiritual well-being, for alternative healing, if you have articles, if you have pictures of anything that's phenomenal, uh, that's maybe paranormal or extraterrestrial or just different, maybe even lighthearted, something to give us hope, that kind of thing, please send it to me. That would be Rebecca at journeyswithrebecca.com. And don't forget, each and every week I'm going to try to make a time for your email questions. You will notice that on the front page of Journeys with Rebecca, we do have a new little audio link where I'll be posting some of the more uh, prominent, shall we say, or memorable um, emails right there on the front page. So if you do happen to miss the show and didn't get yours, you're maybe posted there to the website. And of course, um, you know, discretion is the better part of valor here. So nobody's name will be used unless you choose for me to use that. 
So, you know, anonymity here is important as well as the security of your own um, identity. So you never have to worry about that being revealed here on Journeys with Rebecca. And, you know, I've been kind of remiss in the last couple of weeks. I got so excited about being back on air after my father was ill and um, taking care of some of those things that I have uh, forgotten one of the most important things behind Journeys with Rebecca, and that is of my uh, sponsor, Fate Magazine. Fate Magazine has been around since the 1940s, and as the times have changed, so has the magazine. So I urge you all to click on that link. Go to their website, www.fatemag.com. Go there. I think the last time I checked the last few weeks, they're still offering one free um, one free month, if you will, of a of Fate Magazine so that you can try it before you buy it to see if you like it. And if so, great. No salespeople will call. It's just totally something that you might want to do. So, again, I thank Fate Magazine. Real quickly, before we get back to the guests, I have got just a huge schedule coming up uh, for the rest of this year and beginning of next year. We are also here in Kansas City going to be hosting Mark Kimmel, author of Trillion and Decimal. You definitely want to keep track of the website for that update as to when he's going to be in the area. Uh, it will be very limited number of seating, uh, as well as I'll be traveling to Indianapolis, Dayton, Ohio, Chicago, Sedona, Arizona yet this year, hopefully to make it to back to Washington State. So without further ado, we are going to go to our guest, Dr. Edward Dowdy, Jr., as he talks to us about the great mass in the center of our solar system and what it really means to be a physicist and what it means on, as, in our times today. Stay tuned and don't go away. We'll be right back. Schedule your private psychic reading with Rebecca, a truly gifted, intuitive, and clairvoyant, and the host of Journeys with Rebecca radio show. Call 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Where will your life's journey take you? More than talk, it's entertaining insight and discoveries. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. As promised, we have a most phenomenal guest here tonight, Dr. Edward Dowdy, Jr. I wish to take this opportunity right at the moment and say welcome, welcome back to the show. We're so happy to have you here today. Yeah, thank you very much again, Rebecca, for having, having me on your show again on uh, Journeys with Rebecca. Oh, thank you. Well, like I said, this is going to be really fun because you have absolutely some of the most astounding information that you're going to be sharing with us today, and I'm I'm absolutely grateful to have you on to be able to share this extraordinarily interesting scientific information with all the audience. Um, but, you know, I think what I'm going to do here, Dr. Daddy, for you is kind of let you, you get us up to speed, so to speak, as to really what's what we're going to be doing here today with everyone, okay? Yeah, that's very good. I'll be mean, delighted to do that. Thank you very much. And uh, what I would do, uh, I have always had a keen interest in science and um, actually how nature works. And I, I strive to, to do that when I teach science to the young people, the, young, the new scientists to be. I try to break it down uh, so that they would understand it and try to put it in intuitive terms so as not to frustrate the student to uh, become friendly with nature and science and what, what this is all about. And uh, I've always believed there must be a reason for everything that happens and that, that science doesn't magically get up and just start have thing, causing things to happen. There's always a cause and effect, and there's a reason for that effect, and the student must understand how to grasp that. And uh, I feel that also there is a great national interest in our turning on the students to get them interested in the sciences and to become uh, interested in nature and how nature works and so forth. We need to break down the trend and the the trend that's uh, uh, downtrend in the sciences where students are starting to go into other areas rather than come into the hardcore sciences of physics and so forth. So I can uh, actually break that down for you. And uh, as time goes on, uh, perhaps when time allows, I can give you some uh, short examples on how that works. And uh, what is this all about? This called uh, what I call the extinction shift principle, which is uh, in the title of my book. The word extinction refers here to the an effect whereby when we make a measurement on a primary wave, for an example, we place a window or a mirror or some kind of uh, optical instrument in a path of radiation, we're actually disturbing that wave. We are disturbing the photon that we are making a measurement on. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that we are the real world. It is impossible for us to make measurements with, without causing interference, and that we are the real world. What we actually measure is a an interference. We are we are we are actually distorting the real world of the universe around us when we make measurements. When we go in the laboratory with the attitude and the, the idea that we we can't know everything, then we have uh, started have a good good beginning of trying to grasp the problem and understand the problem. If we have that attitude, then we don't know everything. We can't know everything. We can only at best guess what is going on around us. So I think that we can begin with that uh, with, the, with that with that note. That 
makes total sense to me. I mean, absolutely. Um, with that whole thing that you just talked about, totally makes sense to me. Um, wow, that was really very profound for me. Um, well, you, uh, I really appreciate that um, information for um, the audience, Dr. Dowdy, but w you have some other things that you really wanted also to present here today, some, some major activities, and, and I'd like maybe for you to, to start out with, with talking about how you, um, if I'm not mistaken, you're the one, you are part of the um, operation, as it were, that sends out satellites that does um, surveillance, so to speak, on the galaxy. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, my, my, actually, my employment, I am employed with uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center at, uh, in Green Bay, Maryland, which is the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center. And uh, we assemble uh, the satellites and devices to go into the heavens and the space to look down on the Earth to collect information. We get uh, weather information, meteorology. We look at the atmosphere, contamination of the atmosphere. Uh, they uh, actually try to improve the quality of life for humans on Earth. We have to collect information. And we use a lot of uh, high technical instruments in order to do that. In order to, to do this properly, one would have to understand the physical science of the electromagnetic propagation. And as a matter of fact, we're using some of the same theories, some of the theories that I, I am I'm using also to verify some of my results. But however, uh, I'm an independent researcher when it comes to my book publication, which has nothing to do with my employment. But uh, this uh, the subject matter is very similar. And if, if one were to understand uh, what I'm doing in the book, uh, one could appreciate both uh, fields the uh, space flight, uh, the satellites and all that. We use those instruments to verify some of the things that we're doing in our textbooks and so forth. And what has recently been discovered at the center of our galaxy, the uh, the supermassive object, which, which is known as Sagittarius A, looking at the galactic center of our, our, universe, of our, our galaxy, is something that we did not know about 20 years ago. This was recently discovered around uh, 1992. Uh, when we, when the scientists first started plotting the, uh, uh, super fast moving stars in that area because of the supermass object, uh, we, we use, um, uh, instruments on board satellites in order to, to look at this, this, this region. And, uh, what I would talk about, um, is that, uh, the event that's taking place there enabled us to, uh, actually calculate based on what we know in the physical sciences, uh, the, Kepler motions and the laws of uh, governing orbital motions around planets and so forth. We use those same laws and we'll be able to calculate that there is a small point in space some 26,000 light years from where we are positioned right now. Namely, it takes 26,000 light, 26,000 years for light to propagate from that area to our telescopes. We're looking at a region that's so far away. It takes that, that length of time and that distance. But however, the instruments are powerful enough to enable us to re reassemble the uh, path of the stars. We find one star, namely the star called S2, is in an elliptical path about this so-called black hole. And it is moving so fast, the scientists were able to calculate that the mass of this star is something like 3.7 million times the mass of our solar system and all of our planets in our solar system put together. Ooh. So that's, that's how massive this object is. The fact that the light coming from this region to our telescopes enabled us to calculate the elliptical path and that it is an ellipse, pretty much like the ellipse that we study in geometry, uh, the, the uh, conic sections of the path of uh, geometrical shapes is nearly a perfect ellipse. And that fact that it is an ellipse, uh, to me, is a direct uh, violation, a deviation from what is predicted by general relativity. Because if you look at general relativity and light bending effect predicted by relativity, that path should not be an ellipse. It should be a distorted path because the light would have been deflected or actually bent around that path. And using simple principles of optics, principle of reciprocity, which a lot of scientists forget to use some of these uh, uh, ground, ground principles. The ground principles are overlooked in many cases. When you go back to ground principles, such as the principle of reciprocity, which states that if you take your flashlight, for example, and you shine it into a mirror, and the light light particles reflect from the mirror and then go back and hit a wall, if you were take a light from the wall and shine it back in the same path, it should take the same path back to the flashlight. And to give you an example of how that works, I suppose that you're sitting in your car and you have your mirror, and you're looking through your mirror, and your mirror, uh, you see an image that is reflected from your car mirror, and it happens to be, you happen to be looking into the eyes of another person behind you. If you can see that person, 
and theoretically that person could also see you. He's looking at you're looking at that person and his eyes, and theoretically he's also looking into your eyes because the light coming from that person back to your mirror would take the same path back to you. So that's known as the, the simple principle of reciprocity. If you use that principle, and the principle of the reciprocity applied to the the uh, light bending at the, at the site of Sagittarius A, we can find immediately that there are some deviations from the predictions of general relativity, which I have stated on my website. You can click on the website and go to the topic number six, which I have introduced now, topic number five and number six. We give you a, a sort of a diagram and a thought experience on that subject matter. And looking at that uh, website, the picture just tells us more or less a thousand words when you look at a picture and illustration. So I invite uh, the people who are interested just to go to the website and look at topic number five and six, and that would be explained. Okay. Um, that's So really what you're saying then, in the case of this mass that's at the center of our galaxy, it doesn't follow the laws or the principles of science that we've known up to this point, correct? Right, right. The principles that have been taught in, in the elementary uh, classrooms and uh, also in the uh, beginning of college classroom in physics, namely the principle of relativity, one assumes that the, the, the geometry around us is distorted, there are there is light bending that takes place as a direct interaction between gravitation and electromagnetism. And one can go back to the beginning before all this began and apply the intuitive reasoning and you can look at uh Euclidean space geometry and uh the principles of, of uh intuitive understanding of uh of, of, of Galilean transformations of velocities in Euclidean space and we can we can explain uh, very successfully explaining the, the events that are going on in, in, the, in the universe around us. Well, in, let me let me carry this little thought a little bit farther, um, Dr. Dottie. Is this mass that does not it does not appear to follow any of the rules of regulation, so to speak, of that which is known to science? What what do you make out of it? I mean, what what is your take on on that? That everything that we're doing is wrong? Uh, that maybe all the laws don't apply to everything when you're uh, talking about science? No, Rebecca, what I mean by by uh, the, the, the events that's going on at the center of our galaxy can be explained very nicely if you go back 100 years ago before all this uh, this stuff began with the, the so-called relativity. Okay. Uh, say, okay. say ten, 10 years before Einstein, right. there was a, uh, a scientist in, in a French, uh, a French scientist by the name of Poincaré, who devised a principle which he called uh, l'espace-temps, which means space-time. And at that time, Einstein did not accept space-time, but however, what's going on today, the physicists who try to explain events that are going around us when it comes to high energies, uh, when it comes to things that seem to be going against the intuitive understanding of the day, they try to uh, take the geometry, and, and not to explain it, they must distort the geometry. They must bend the rules, so to speak. So you know, you're actually sort of bending the rules a little bit from, from the rules of, of, uh, of uh, Euclidean space. Then they go into some other space. Dr. Dodd, hang on just a second. We're going to come back and pick that back up, and then we're going to continue on. You've got a lot more information. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Talk with an extra dimension. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Dr. Dowdy and Dr. Dowdy Jr., I guess I should say. And Dr. Dowdy, we had to cut you off. We got kind of cut off on the last segment there um, when you were discussing what happened 100 years before now time uh, in regards to that whole theory and the, the geometry. And I'd kind of like you to pick that back up just a little bit and, you know, maybe finish that thought process so everybody doesn't get lost here. Yeah, what I wanted to say, uh, Rebecca, uh, we are celebrating right now 100 years of Einstein's work. And uh, if you were to go into the science, sciences today, into academia, and to be taught physical science and uh, and the high energy physics today, what they would teach you is essentially the the work that has begun after Einstein and uh, Poincaré, who in, introduced the space-time concept. And you go back to Euclidean space, they would have to distort the geometries. They must leave Euclidean space and go into some other geometry. For example, they must go into hyperspace and other other geometries, which uh, which uses the Lorentz transformations and time dilation and other transformations to, to in order to to explain the physics in the mathematical physical science terms they use today in the, in the classroom. But if you go back before that, 100 years, let's say 10 years before Einstein, 
it seems that the physical science was pretty much on the right track, and the uh, and the geometry was essentially Euclidean space geometry, which is the same geometry pretty much used uh, by the ancients who who constructed the Great Pyramids. And you had only uh, three dimensions. You know, you have uh, you have x, y, z. You have a length, and you have a width, and you had a and a depth. In order to to, uh, to explain the geometry of space, you needed those three dimensions. Today, they're using uh, other geometries, which some require more than three dimensions, or some require many, many dimensions. But if you go back, you can use logical addition of velocities and uh, the measuring of the uh, entities of photons and so forth. You can assume that we cannot measure the primary photon. We actually distort the primary photon. We will make a measurement on it. This, none of these things are taught today in the, in the physics. You'll find the textbooks are missing these essential uh, principles of the Galilean transformations of velocities, the logical addition of velocities, and the idea that we would go into the classroom and we make measurements. Now, what is not also not focused on or stressed in the classroom, no experiment can prove a theory. For example, the experiments, you could have thousands of experiments, but no matter how many experiments you have, uh, there, 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 may have there may have been thousands of experiments who have uh, people who have tried to verify relativity. But however, these thousands of experiments still will not prove a theory. The experiment can only discount a theory. See, if you have two or three theories, there, there can, we know that there can only be one correct theory. You may have a theory and somewhere someone else will come up with an alternative theory. But however, the experiment and the nature's experiment would decide which one of these theories is correct. And, and what I'm saying with, about the center of our galaxy, that is an experiment that is taking place right now at the center of our galaxy at the site of Sagittarius A, namely this, these stars that are in, in rapid motion about this supermassive object known as the black hole. And you see the elliptical path that has been plotted by the astrophysicists, which is actually an, an experiment in nature. And I'm claiming that this experiment that's going on in nature uh, directly uh, supports my theory and that it runs counter to predictions of general relativity. You'll find on my site where I mentioned that when you go to topic uh, topic number six and topic number five, when you go down to the blackboard, which I call the, the chalkboard, uh, Dr. Dowd's chalkboard, you click on the chalkboard and you come to my chalkboard entitled Dr. Dowd's chalkboard where I introduce these topics. You can click on these topics and I have topics that I have posted over a number of years now on, on the website. So what does, what does this, I don't, I don't know if I want to call it a discovery, but what does this represent? What does this mean to us? What I feel it means to us, in many cases, we need to take a second look. We need to, uh, I think we need to slow down because, for, for example, we are going down a foggy road, and let's say it's, it's a foggy road and we may be going 100 miles an hour, and uh, we, we don't slow down to take a look to find out which direction we're moving, how fast we're moving. But when we slam into the wall, we, we, we will come to an abrupt stop. But sometimes when we all follow the leader, if you recall several years ago, uh, a couple of decades ago, when you had these acrobat fighters and they were flying in, in uh, uh, flight format, they were doing the, the aerobat stunts with, with the aircraft, and they were actually following the leader. And uh, the leader made an error, and all of these aircraft followed the leader right into the ground, and you have uh, instantly uh, four fighter crafts going right into the ground following the leader. But sometimes we need to teach the young people, especially the young students, that we need to do our own thinking when it comes to reasoning and to understanding the laws and physics around us, to try to do our own thinking. And we don't need the, uh, for example, we don't need the referees or the peer reviews or other people who to tell us how to do our own thinking. And I think that's what we are feeling right now today in science. Uh -huh. we, don't, we need to do our own thinking more. Uh, and, and you know what, Dr. Dottie, I think that, that, that statement needs to go all across the board, science included, but in every aspect of one's life. We need to do our own thinking which means we need to be more in touch with ourselves in order to do that as individuals. Exactly. And across the board. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Exactly. You exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, that gets into, you know, last time you were on, we talked a great deal about the extinction shift principle. And we're going to get into that here. We're almost out of time in this segment. But where you were talking about bringing in the ability of intuition into the sciences, which is really to most people is a foreign thought process. And I, I, I just really think that it's, it's, has so many more benefits than what, what it's being exactly. looked at. So, right. And you know what? If you guys will stay tuned, we have got a lot more with Dr. Dowdy on the next segment. Don't go away, and we'll be right back with more of Journeys with Rebecca in just a moment.
email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Dr. Dowdy, Jr., and um, Dr. Dowdy, you have absolutely given us a wealth of information. I really appreciate, first of all, the information about what's going on in the uh, center of our galaxy there, and I think we need to probably get updates from you periodically to see if there's any changes or anything going on with that whole whole thing, whole system, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we're going to keep the website updated, my website updated, um, with any information that you wish to share. We'll, We'll have a link to your website. Uh, which is, uh, of course, on the World Wide Web, Extinction Ship Principle, yeah, but, yeah, dot com. But I also take a few minutes here, if you will, and talk about some of the alternatives that might be available. Sure. Uh, and I think it is it's very important that we uh, slow down and um, slow the pace down and take a look at our alternatives, in, especially in the physical sciences, because a lot of times we miss very important uh, key principles and, and foundations of physics. And there are some um, principles, namely uh, the principle of uh, the rectilinear path of velocities of photons and, and things like Galilean transformations and reciprocity. And these things uh, get, uh, uh, the baby is, is actually thrown up with the bathwater. We don't use these principles. We put these things aside and opt for uh, more uh, highfalutin principles and think that that has good buzzwords and sound good, but however, they may deviate from the, the principle of nature. One thing we cannot... Uh, uh, play around with that, that is nature. We can't dictate uh, what is correct and what is not correct to nature. Only uh, the, the natural sciences and experiments in the lab, laboratory can tell us that. Uh, what's happening today, uh, you have the, the theoretical physicists and you have the experimental physicists, but then again, you may have a subset of those who may be good in both theory and also experiment, and those are few and in between now. And uh, the thing is, we have too often the trend and the tendency uh, the physical science community to say that, well, this is not my field, and uh, if there's no paper on it, and nobody's writing anything, and get anything about it, or saying anything about it, then I'm not interested that people have a tendency not to, to want to slow down and uh, put their own work aside for a moment and to look at something else, uh, an alternative view, viewpoint. And this way, I think we are failing the physical science today. Oh, gosh, I couldn't agree with you more, 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 more than that. And we, you know, we talked a little bit about that off the air, about how people aren't sharing anymore because, unfortunately, our society is kind of ego-driven. But, you know, I know that you have been doing research for years and years and years. And um, who's supporting you in these endeavors, Dr. Dowdy? Uh, Actually, Rebecca, uh, I'm an independent researcher, and I have actually no sponsors and no supports whatsoever on my mission theory in my book and what I I call the extensionship principle. And uh, I have been at this for almost uh, 20 some years now. And the book is actually in its second edition right now, the first edition being 1991 uh, self-published book, where I have a number of peer reviews on the back cover of the book, and I'm, I'm gaining in my reviews now. I have some reviews here and abroad, and other countries also have I'm, I'm on a, um, a list of uh, correspondence that I have been able to get. Uh, there are some people who are starting to take an interest in this now because we, uh, are, we are not able to answer the questions that are going on in the physical science world around us, and now some people are starting to take a look at other avenues. So I, I welcome this, and I'm happy that, uh, to be able to say that uh, so far, uh, after, after all the ways that I've caused uh, in, around my region, they have been able to punch a hole in what I'm doing right now, not yet. So I don't think they will because I'm, by, I'm abiding by laws of nature and the principle of nature in my, my work, which is independent. Well, and, uh, yes. That is absolutely fabulous. And, and I, first of all, let me tell you personally, I appreciate you abiding by the laws of nature because really that governs everything. Right. We, right. You know, if we work against it, we're not going to get true and accurate information, yeah. nor exactly. are we going to get anything because exactly. we're actually bucking the system. Right. And you can't do that. It's already been in place much longer exactly. than we were here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We, we are putting up an enormous amount of uh, satellites and uh, observational instruments into outer space now. And we are, there's so much data that's coming from the uh, uh, space-borne systems, the Hubble telescope, and, and many other systems out there that uh, many of the scientists, we don't have time to analyze all of it. And uh, it to do all this work to analyze all the information that is constantly pouring in, it turns out that we can only answer a very small percentage of what's going on. Let's say 90% of the, of the, uh, the information that's coming in, we have no answers for and less than 10%, we can we can even you know, try to make an attempt to explain some of the things that are going on in deep space. That's very humbling. Oh, yeah. You have to be <laughs> humble. When you look out in the deep space, one would have to be humble. <laughs> you know what? Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. 
Wow, that's fabulous, though. I mean, that of course, if we had other people, you know, you talk a lot that we're we're failing our students. We've talked about that before. Let's uh, and before we run out of time, I want to go ahead and give your website again. It's extinctionshift.com. Yes, yes. The this, extinction is a, is a extinction of the animals, and you put the word shift as in shift gear. Extinctionshift.com. So for those that didn't get here or weren't listening to the first show that you did with us when you were talking spe- specifically about that particular book, I urge everyone because it raises a question, but it also raises a lot of other things. It, it, it raises that um, a, an energy, if you will, that we must do something different so that we can actually find out how to live within these laws. Right. Because right. I, I, I truly I truly am uh, so appreciative of you coming here on this show and explaining to us a lot of things. Um, we need to bring back in, the intuition into science. We need to bring science back into the schools in a more appropriate manner and make people interested in it. Dr. Dowdy, thank you so much for being here. We will keep everyone posted. If you have new information, we'll post it to journeyswithrebecca.com website. There'll be a hot link there to your website so people can find you, okay? Thank you very much, Rebecca, for having me on your show. Yeah. Well, thank you, okay. and you take care. And you do the same. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Rebecca. This is the place where your journey begins. Is your career or business headed in the right direction? Is your love life all it can be, or is it missing something? Perhaps you're still looking for that someone special. And those closest to you, will what they do influence or affect you? For truthful, accurate, and compassionate answers to your unique life's journey, contact me by calling 1-888-958-2768 to schedule your personal and private reading. Where will your life's journey take you? Don't forget to find out where your life's journey will lead you. Call Rebecca to set up your personal and private reading at 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with one of my very favorite segments. Not that all the rest of them aren't, but this is the mailbag. This is where I have I read the letters that you all of the audience have sent to me. And I have been a little behind schedule here, as you well know. Um, so I have many, many of them to try to read. So in the weeks to come, we are definitely going to be addressing each and every one of the emails. If you yourself would like to get an email free of charge answered, it's mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. And now we're going to go right on to the first one. And this one's from Kyle. I'm sorry, from Kyle. He's in Tacoma, Washington. He writes, Rebecca, I love your show. Thank you, Kyle. Um, you have talked about communicating with your spirit guides. How do I do that? How do I know it's my spirit guide? And what if I communicate with a bad spirit? Okay, well, all those are really, really great questions, Kyle. Um, matter of fact, I'm really glad that you brought those up. Communicating with one spirit guide is a matter of, I call it meditation. I call it a place where you have to find yourself in a, in a, in a quiet space. I call it my quiet, safe space. Um, if you do not know how to meditate, that's the first and most important thing that you need to do is to get into a meditation class if you have one locally. If not, you can certainly check out my website because I do have beginning uh, meditation CDs uh, designed just for the beginner so they can learn how to communicate. And I do have a CD there specifically designed for communicating with your spirit guide. Um, and the, the reason that you know it is is because you'll sense, you'll, you'll recognize it as something that feels familiar and feels good. Which goes right into the next question. How, what do you do if you, how do you know if you're not talking to a bad spirit? It's all about the process, Kyle. It's all about setting up your space, your quiet, sacred, safe space. You do this out of intention, the intention of love, the intention of honor, the intention of that you wish to communicate with those spirit guides that are here as teachers, as educators, uh, as loving spirits as we know that they are when we call upon them in that manner. And when you do that, you're asking for protection. You're asking for guidance. You're asking for that inner knowing to come forward so that you know that that individual, that spirit entity that you're speaking with is that that which belongs to you. Again, I urge you, I urge you and our, everyone out there that is listening, please, if you do not know how to meditate, I suggest you getting um, some meditation, guided meditations to start out with, learn the exercises, learning how to take care of yourself, learning how to protect yourself 
while going into this very simple, once you learn it, very simple routine of meditation. Kyle, following up, let me know what happens with that, okay? Okay, right on to the next one. This one's from Evelyn, and she's from Indianapolis, Indiana. And she writes, Rebecca, I enjoyed your lecture last fall here in Indianapolis. When are you going to be back? Thank you so much. I will be back again this fall, 2005, back in Indianapolis. I had such a great time with everyone there. Uh, it's a great city, uh, great open people, um, and the people that were participating in this wonderful uh, Mind and Body Spirit Expo there in Indianapolis, it was fabulous. Thank you so much. And Evelyn, I look forward to seeing you there. I'll also be hosting a lecture there as well as doing uh, private readings there. Okay, this next one is from KJ. KJ does not leave his city, just the name or her name. It says, my mom and dad recently separated after almost 30 years of marriage. Actually, my dad ran off with another woman, and my mom is really broken up and now really hates all men. Do you ever see her as finding someone new? And again, KJ does not leave a city for me. Um, this is a tough one, KJ. Uh, first of all is that your mom has to understand, and, and you know, I, I see so many things going on. It's going to be very difficult to try to answer this in the few minutes that we have left of this segment, KJ. But I see many, many things going on around your mom right now. She feels like that she's devoted her 30 years of her marriage, of her life to her marriage, uh, to feel like that she's uh, been betrayed, and when in some sense she has. Um, I say shame on your father for doing what he did. I believe that two of them, like many, many couples, what happens with many, many couples, KJ, is that they get married, they, they start their lives together, they raise children, they forget how to communicate and to be whole as a, as a, as a unit. Uh, with each other. So within that broken down areas of communication, they're like roommates, if you will, living underneath the same roof. Uh, your mom feels like she's given all and all and all of herself and she just possibly could not give any more of herself when it comes to this marriage when in fact she did not give anything to herself. There was no, there was, there was no communication. The breakdown in the communication between your mother and father started at a, at a very young age when, you know, within several years after getting married. Um, so this whole process that's happened here has happened for her. It's time for her to live her life. And and honestly, she doesn't really hate all men right now. She just thinks that all men are kind of stinky and poopy, and I understand that um, with her feeling that way. I mean, I understand her feelings. Um, but she needs to get over that part of it first. She needs to understand this did not happen to her. This is something that happened. And now she has to learn how to make the best out of a, an otherwise very, very difficult and tough situation for her. I feel like that with some time, because time is going to heal this, and with some education and with her understanding this could be an opportunity for a beginning of a new life for her as opposed to looking at what she's lost, what she can gain. I feel like that there could be somebody that comes into her life, but it still feels like it's a couple of years out, KJ, for her because she has a lot, a lot of healing to do. And I hope that she can find that which she needs where you live, KJ. And thank you and blessings to both you and your mom and, of course, your dad and the rest of the family because I know it has affected each and every one of you. Now, at this time, what I want to do for you folks is, again, to give you the email address. This is for the mailbag. This is so that you can get your questions answered right here on air. That's mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. And also, this, to take this opportunity to let you know that these personal and private readings that I do for people by appointment, you know, obviously there's a fee and you can get that information right on my website. However, they're such a valuable tool to help assist and guide you along the process. So I encourage you to please check it out. Maybe get yourself a reading one day. Uh, I think you'll find it both uplifting, inspirational, healing, and helpful to you and to whatever's going on in your life. Until then, blessings to each and every one of you and may your life be very fulfilling to you. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discovery. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night.